This is a Magnavox hard disk drive DVD recorder. It is a model MDR515H slash F7, manufactured in July of 2011. Got a little cooling fan back there, an HDMI output, and some inputs and outputs, and an antenna input and output. I wonder if it has a NTSC tuner or an ATSC tuner. Uh, the customer sent it to me and said that it is dead. It will not power up, but he hears something on the inside of it. Let's go ahead and pop the top off, plug it in, and see what we hear. Well, there is the inside of it. It does have a Western Digital Green 500 gigabyte hard drive. And this board looks remarkably similar to the board that you would find in a DVD VCR combo. Just slight differences. But take a look what I see right off the bat, right there. Three of them. Well, I certainly see three capacitors that have leaked from the top. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see if we can figure out what the customer said he heard on the inside. All right, here we go. Power on. So I've got the microphone sitting right here. So let me turn this on, see if it'll pick it up. That's power on. Here's power off. Yeah, I'm going to say there's a problem with the switch mode power supply. So let's go ahead and pull this thing apart and see if we can get the power supply out of it. See what might be going on with it. So I haven't pulled it apart yet, but just based on what I'm hearing, I'm going to show you what I think it might be. Here's the schematic on the unit. So here are two of the 3300 microfarad caps that are bulged, and then they have a 6.8 volt Zener diode across that, so that if this voltage becomes more than 6.8 volts, that diode's actually gonna short, so I'll bet you that diode is shorted because of these bulged capacitors, and then the other 3300 is right there. So at a minimum, all three of these caps and that Zener diode is gonna need to be replaced. That's just speculation at this point, because once again, I haven't pulled this thing apart. So let's go ahead and pull it apart and see if my speculation is correct. So I've never had one of these apart. This is the first one I've ever seen. So this will be a learning experience for you and me. So C2205 and C2216 are the two capacitors on the 5 volt line. And D2213 is that 6.8 volt Zener diode. So let's just do an ohm check across it. And I'm seeing 330 ohms. That's not bad. Could it be just the capacitors that have failed? Well, unfortunately, I don't have any 3300s at 6.3, but I do have the 4700s at 6.3 that I use in the Magnavox DVD VCR units. It is normally acceptable to go up in value, but not acceptable to go down in value. So I'm wondering if these are actually going to fit because as you can see, the footprint is physically larger by probably maybe three or four millimeters, but it looks like I have a gap in between them. So they might be tight, but I think I can get them to fit. Let's go ahead and pop the old ones out. We'll do a quick ESR check on them, pop the new ones in and see if it makes a difference. Okay, so I thought I'd go ahead and just check these capacitors in circuit before I took anything out. I've got every capacitor on this board marked on the secondary side and I do have the one main filter cap marked on the primary side. And so let's go ahead and verify lead integrity is zero and I'll reset it to zero right there. So the first one I'm gonna check is a 1000 microfarad and that's 5.7 ohms. That thing is definitely bad. This one is a 22 microfarad, 2.1. I'm not too terribly disappointed with that. Then these are the three 3300. I'd expect to see about a tenth of an ohm at the absolute maximum, and I'm seeing 3.3 ohms on that one. Remember, these two are in parallel, so 2.5 ohms, so they're 5 ohms each. This is a 10 at 50, 1.2 ohms, not bad whatsoever. This is a 10 at 50, 1.3 ohms, not bad also. A 2200 at 25 volts, 0.01, perfectly happy with that. This is a 470 at 16, 0.22 ohms, very happy with 0.22 ohms. And this is a 220 microfarad at 50 volt and I'm seeing 0 0.08 0 0.09 very happy with that and then kind of hard to see because of the reflection this is the main filter cap 470 microfarads and I'm seeing 0 0.1 very happy with 0.1 ohms so let's go ahead and change at least the 1000 microfarad up here and the three 3300 microfarad caps right there uh, uh, uh.
Okay, new caps have been installed. Let's go ahead and do a quick ESR test on them. Make sure they're better than the old ones were. Remember this one was like 5 ohms. Now we have 0 0.05 ohms. These were 3 to 4 ohms each. Now we're at 0.7. Remember these two are in parallel, so the reading's going to be half what they actually are, 0.3. So they're probably about 0.6 each. And we'll take a quick outer circuit test on these caps. Yep, 5.5 ohms on the 1000. 4.3 ohms on one of the 3300s. 5.8 on the other 3300 and 3.2 on the last 3300 and remember these are these are intercon caps i thought they were suscon is that one an intercon too oh yes it is intercon but they're 85 degrees celsius caps i very much advise against running 85 degrees celsius caps in a switch mode power supply they just don't hold up so i thought before i'd put the dvd in it i'd go ahead and fire it back up but guess what Same exact problem. Well, that Zener diode check, 300 and something ohms, should be okay. But let's go ahead and make some other checks and see if maybe there's a secondary Zener diode somewhere that I missed. So I did a bit more checking and I found this diode right here, which is a 1 in 4005. So if I measure the anode side of the diode when I power the unit up, it goes to 0.98 volts. The cathode side is 0.1 volts. So if I kill the power, and I go to ohms and measure the cathode side, I get 0.3, 0.4 ohms. And if I find this diode D1013 right here, I get 0.06 and 0.05. I believe that is the culprit. That diode is shorted. That diode is on the 12 volt line. Let me show you where that is in the schematic. So the EV 12 volts, which is the Everon 12, comes through here, comes down through here, to this point right here goes across goes across that one in 4005 into this voltage regulator and look at this d1013 right there goes right to ground so i'm going to have to pull the main board out of this unit and unsolder that diode and see if it's actually bad or not it is a 15 volt zener diode so i don't know if i have one or not Okay, so I have the main board out and I do have the cathode unsoldered right there. So if I measure from the anode to the pad that it was soldered to, I see 6.83 mega ohms. If I measure from the anode to the cathode, I see 0.6 ohms. That is the culprit. Well, let me see if I have a 15 volt Zener diode laying around somewhere. Well, unfortunately, I do not have the Zener diodes I need in stock, so I'm going to go ahead and get those on order pending the customer's approval, but I want to go ahead and check the caps on the DVD board first and just make sure they're going to pass the test so I can give him an accurate estimate. I do believe replacing that Zener diode on the main board is going to cure the problem. I don't foresee any issues with that. So we'll get started. 330 microfarad cap, 1.5 ohms, just a hair high for my liking. I do have those for replacement just in case. I'd like to see an ohm or less. 47, 5.7 ohms. I'm going to call that one definitely bad. And I'll mark the 330 at the same time so I can replace that. 0.42 ohms. I'm totally happy with that on a 330. 3.4 ohms on a 47. I'm going to say that one's bad as well. I'd like to see probably 2 ohms or less on that. 1.1, definitely bad. 0.4, good. 0.3, good. 2.2, definitely bad. So we need to change the first and the fourth. 0.3, I'm totally happy with 0.3. Now a 47 microfarad cap, 3.3. Once again, like to see probably two ohms or less. A 100, four ohms, that thing is toast. Half an ohm on a 100. Five ohms, oh, that thing is toast. 0.5 ohms, totally happy with 0.5, but I like to see about 0.5. So five ohms, you are out of here. A 47, once again, probably one ohm or less. 1.9, nope. Another 330. 0.5, I'm good with 0.5, that's about the limit. 0.3, totally happy with 0.3. 0.4, that's okay. 4.5, you're out of here for a 47. 2.5, I think I'll change that just to be safe. And 3 ohms, I'd like to change all of those 47s. So out of 20 capacitors, 12 of those I have deemed bad. Let's go ahead 
and check the caps on the main board as well as on the hard drive board just in case they might be bad as well. So I made a real quick cheat sheet just to go around this board quickly and check these caps. This is a 1000.17, I'm good with that. This is a 100, 1.8, eh, semi okay with that. This one is a 100. 1.6 for what it's used for it's okay it's not in the power supply this one is a 100 3.2 a little bit high 100 2.4 and another 100 at 1.7 i'm gonna let those fly this is only a 1 5.9 i'm good with 5.9 on a 1 that's a 22 3 ohms good with that 6.4 another 1 6.9 i'm okay with that and a 100.5 perfectly fine with that now we got a couple 470s 0.5, I'm okay with that. 0.2, I'm okay with that. And this one should be a 1000 and a 470. 0.2 ohms, I'm okay with that. This is a 10. 3 ohms, great. This is a 10. 3.8, I'm fine with that. And this one is a 220. I'd like to see like an ohm or less on it. 0.49, perfectly fine with that. This is a 10. 2 ohms, I'm perfectly happy with that. Now we're up to a 100. 1.3, great. This one is a 4.7, 2.4 ohms, I'm good with that. And this is a 0.33, it's probably gonna be high. Seven ohms, for a 0.33, that's perfectly fine. The next three are all 2.2s, 6.9 ohms, 7.8, and 7.3, good with all three of those. This one is a 10, four ohms, I'm okay with that. A 3.3, five ohms, fine. And a 2.2, 5.3, good. This is a 3.3 at 5.8 ohms, good with that. A one microfarad at eight ohms, perfectly fine. And another one microfarad at nine ohms, perfectly fine with that. This one is a 22, 3.2 ohms, good. And this one is a 100. 0.6 ohms, perfectly fine with that. Now let's see, did I test this one? This one is a 100. 0.7 ohms, perfectly fine. And this one is a 100 at 1.6 ohms, good. Now this is a 100 at 0.9 ohms. This is a 47 at 0.9 ohms. This one is a 100 at 0.6. This one is a 100 at 0.8. I'm good with all of those. These are both 1000s, 2.6, just a hair high for my liking, and 3.5. I'm questioning those two caps. This is a 100 at 0.95 ohms. This one is a 47 at 0.9 ohms. That's great. These two are 100s, 0.61 and 0.84, and I think I already tested this one, it's a 100 as well, 0.95 ohms. Now we're down into the corner. These are both 3.3s, 3.3 ohms, and 2.3 ohms, perfectly fine. This is a 100, 0.9 ohms, I'm good with that. This one is a 100 at 0.8 ohms, great. Now these are 10s, 2 ohms, I'm okay with that. 2.3, okay with that. And 2.4, I'm okay with that. And this last one is the last 10. 3.3, good. Now we're up to these little guys. These are 10s as well. 3 ohms, I'm okay with that. 3 ohms, okay. 2.7, okay. And 1.5, okay. Now the last one is a 100. I've got 1.1, just a hair high. So out of all of the caps on the board, these two right here, they're both 1,000 microfarad caps. I think I'm gonna recommend to replace those two. Everyone else seems to be doing just fine. And last, we'll test the capacitors on the hard drive board. This is connected to the 500 gigabyte hard drive. So this is a 47.8, I'm okay with that. Another 47, four ohms. I'd like to see that be just a little bit lower. And another 47 at 0 0.07. So I'm definitely gonna recommend that we change at least that one. These are both tens. 0.9 ohms, I'm okay with 0.9, and 3.9 on a 10, that is very acceptable. Okay, so at this point, I will get my customer an estimate and we'll move forward if he approves the estimate. I certainly hope you enjoyed the diagnostic portion on the hard drive DVD recorder, Magnavox MDR515H. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I'll try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Be patient. I do have a full-time job and I do this in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of the diagnostic portion of the video. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.